Hi, I'm Flamingo and I'm going to do a review on a lot of albums that I just bought. And I just want to start off with poor Heinzis. He did um, make a blog, but he did a blog on, on the beach Neil Young. And WMG, I think, found the videos and decided to take it off. So here I am doing a review on music. Hopefully it does not get taken off. Here's the first one I'm going to do, which is Vampire Weekend Contra. And it just was released on January 12th. And for me, I only listen to old bands. Like basically 80s from under, you know, uh, 50s to 80s is what I usually listen to. Um, this was the only, from their first album, this was the only new band where I was actually paying attention to and where seven months ago I went out and bought their first album. Um, and so the second album I heard about was going to be the supreme test for me. If I like it, that means this band for me was definitely going to be worth to follow and, you know, to really listen to. And they proved me right. Contra is just a fantastic album. And, you know, Vampire Weekend just, I think, are so different and uh, from much things I've heard in today and almost ever. I, I do admit that they do show quite a bit of Paul Simon um, in their music um, in just how Ezra Koenig sings. In my opinion, he sounds fairly similar to Paul Simon and I know the first album is very compared to Graceland. I don't know which album they're comparing this album to, but Paul, probably some album from Paul Simon. But um, anyway, this is still just a fantastic album. And of course, in their first album, they talk a lot, about, a lot about college, you know, simple loves and simple college themes. Of course, they made the valid point that they weren't in college, so they, I think they realized they really had to um, get deeper into songwriting, so they did. Um, they say that uh, the first album was very much based in um, kind of New York, their home city, where this one, I do admit, does have more of a California feel. And I think I heard that because they spent more time um, in the south of the United States than they were used to at the time. So they had different writing um, ideas and inspirations. And so Contra, I have a feeling this is going to be the album that makes Vampire Weekend Again. Um, just bigger than life and I hear that it's already um, bringing them to whole new limits on the charts and stuff so that's really good because they're really talented um, they bring a lot of new things into music and stuff and um, different sounds and stuff so it's I think I'll read the whole uh, album out to you Horchata, White Sky, Holiday, California English, Taxi Cab, Run, Cousins, Giving Up the Gun, Diplomat's Son and I Think You're a Contra and on iTunes, there's a bonus track called Giants. Um, it's just, oh my goodness, I, <laughs> I'm just so excited from this, for reviewing this album because it's just fantastic. I can't say that enough. But the only thing I hope Empire Weekend does, their first album was released in 2008, which was about two years ago now. And um, the thing is, I only bought my album, the first album of theirs, seven months ago. And, you know, I was so obsessing over that first album, I just could not wait until I heard, of course, Contra was coming out. I actually hope Vampire Weekend releases a new album, hopefully in 2011, the next year. I know, it, I know I'm know i very aware that it does take time, especially with the music they do. It takes time to write all the things, arrange everything. And, but I think they should maybe try to release an album next year. And I think they proved to that point where they're just so professional now as a band because, of course, um, after the first album, I heard a lot of them still had their ordinary jobs. Um, I'm now for certain that they just rely on being musicians now like this since they're doing so well. Um, I think they should try to release an album in 2011, the next year, and um, hopefully that will happen because I don't know if I can wait another two years for another Vampire Weekend album. I'll, I'll buy it, but, you know, it's one of those things, exact, you know, it's hard to just, like, I don't know how to say this, but you just, this album, I heard another reviewer on this album, and he said he wanted, it seems like he loves the album, it says when you finish it, you want more, I do agree, I do want to hear more after the completion of this album, it's one of those things where you think, that can't be it, there has to be more. Um, so I guess that's the yearning effect. Maybe that's what Vampire Weekend wants, 
and maybe they're already thinking about releasing new album next year. I don't know, but I'm just hoping that Vamp or Weekend keeps on it because they're doing fantastic stuff. I must say though, my first album, Deep Down, is still my personal favorite, but Contra is still wow. It's just whoa. And I got a limited edition since I bought it on the very first day. I got this. It's um, um, Contra Mega Melt. It's like just three remixes of the whole two remixes of basically the whole album and a whole remix of the song Cousins and it's by Toy Selecta. I don't know if I'll buy it, of course, yeah, I wouldn't. Okay, moving on now. This is another album I've been looking for forever and it's Madness, One Step Beyond and it even has a neat sticker. I'm from Canada. I don't know if you can see that well. No, no, sorry, you can't. But this is Made in England and it's from 1979. It's Madness's first album and um... It's just, I've been looking for this album forever. My dad grew up um, in the Middle East, and so his main um, music outlets were from England. Of course, he's still got the American classics that, uh, you know, the, most of the world had, but he got the cool advantage that he got British bands before even the United States got, got to know who these bands were. And Madness was one of them that he just remembers was, you know, he has quite a few tapes of Madness. And I grew up on Madness. And they're one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, one Step Beyond is just perfect. It's a ska album. And um, a ska revival band, I must say. And it's just a fantastic album. Like, I know I'm saying fantastic story too much, but I really like the music. I really get into the music I like. And Madness, I must say, is if I was in a band, this would almost be kind of the band I would want to be in. Um, because, I don't know, it's just, it would seem so much fun. And I don't know if I'd be as kooky as Madness, but, you know, um, I'll read the list of the songs on this album. There's a lot more. One Step Beyond, My Girl, Night Boat to Cairo, Believe Me, Land of Hope and Glory, The Prince, Tarzan's Nuts, In the Middle of the Night, Ben Breakfast Man, Razorblade Alley, Swan Lake, Rockin' in A Flat, Mummy's Boy, and Chipmunks Are Go. Uh, Madness, I remember a week and I must say, Madness are a more unique band, and they're one band that they get overshadowed. I think they should be more known to the world, because a lot of people only know Madness as this one-hit wonder, and to me, that's very absurd. Um, of course, they had the um, hit Our House, that just blew the whole window open for them, and it made them really huge, but I don't think that that's their only hit. For certain on this album, to me, it's just, I like every single song, but One Step Beyond, My Girl, Night Boat to Cairo, The Prince, and even their rendition of Swan Lake. Swan Lake, I just love. That's one of my favorite songs on the album. And Bed and Breakfast, man. Like, I, <laughs> they're one band that I just don't think they are a one-hit wonder. And um, I think uh, they should be bigger than what they, well, they are very big. Um, but of course, they're more bigger in the UK and in Europe, and I'm from Canada, so I come to people and they have never heard of Madness. And it's it took me forever to find Madness. Like, I, it was almost impossible for me to find the album, even the new one, Liberty of Norton Fulgate. It took me forever to find that album. And um, I found that one much quicker than One Step Beyond, because that's a new album and they had it, I think had in like my HMV which is a big store in uh, Edmonton um, and I bet in a lot of places around the world but Madness I found on White Ave and a store called Megatunes and um, it just has a lot of rare music and I'm happy that they have had Madness and stuff so um, yeah One Step Beyond I actually recommend people to listen to like I said if you're in North America, it might be harder to find, um, and parts of the other worlds, I don't know. I know in Europe, it's it must be abundant, um, and I bet a lot of people have it. But anyway, Madness is definitely a must-have on my part to have, and they just, they're just a good outlet to get away from your day's hardship. You know, they just, there's some of the songs just have no meaning. They just have fun and be weird, like the British people they are. And yeah, it's just if you just want to just let go and of all your worries, almost something like Fraggle Rock here. But listen to Madness. They're definitely a must-have band to listen to. 
and check out part two because now I just realized I don't have enough time to fit the other albums in, so yeah, thanks.